Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Basics. My name is Aaron Bjork. I am the lead shepherd and elder of Fellowship of the Cross, co-host of Far Beyond the Temple Curtain radio program, which airs on Dove FM. And we're continuing our trek here in Beyond the Basics into the Didache. It is a, believed to be, uh, and we're pretty sure, uh, writing of, uh, of a group of first century Christians. What did the first century Christians believe? Um, the, the, what did these people venerate? What did they follow, especially before um, uh, Roman Catholicism or the, the universal church? Uh, the word Catholic just simply means universal. Uh, took over um, Christianity and made it a state religion, uh, made it something that was required um, instead of something that was uh, persecuted against. It was accepted and loved. And so what did these people believe? Uh, last time we met, we went through chapter one of the Didache, and we talked about uh, the, uh, the, the reference that it says that there are two ways. There's a way to life and a way to death. In modern-day Christianity, we tend not to really use that word way. We tend instead to think of truth. Now, Jesus says that he is the way, the truth, and the life that no man comes to the Father except through him or through that way, truth, and life. Now, we know the verse, yet what we, I tend to see many times in modern-day Western Christianity is that while we know way, truth, and life, we only really venerate truth. We don't believe that Christians today are called to walk in the way that he presented uh, that would be works righteousness. After all, didn't Jesus nail the entire law of the Torah to the cross? Of course, I'm being facetious. I don't believe that. And I believe that to believe that is heresy. Jesus said, you, but you're saying, wait a second. Jesus came to uh, get rid of the law. No, he didn't. He says, I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill. The word fulfill, folks, does not mean to get rid of. The word translates to, uh, from a Greek word that actually means to fully explain, to augment, to actually make more binding. See, the law was never meant to be an opportunity for people if they obeyed it perfectly so they can go to heaven. The law was about knowing how to obey God. It, even the word law, Torah, and the transliteration of the translation from Hebrew, T-O-R-H, and then we spell it in English the way it sounds, T-O-R-A-H, Torah, has translated very poorly into English as law. It probably much better translates to the word teaching. Jesus is the full embodiment of Torah. The Old Testament is in the New Testament uh, revealed. The New Testament is in the Old Testament concealed. So Jesus comes being the full explanation of the Father. Jesus didn't come to abolish Torah. Jesus came to fully explain. And we have every indication that his teachings were handed down to people that wrote things like the Didache. And they explained the way, truth, and life. Not just information, but incarnation and a pathway. Why are pathways important? Well, if we're busy doing the will of the Father, we won't be filled with uh, time to do our own will. Jesus says, I did not come to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me, and we are called to do the same. And so this book really is a book of do's and don'ts. And we say, well, that's works righteousness. It's just about believing. That's for salvation. Absolutely. Absolutely. If anyone, John 3, 16, and of course his conversation with Nicodemus, and we know that Jesus was making reference to the serpent lifted up on the, the bronze uh, pole in the wilderness when the fiery serpents were biting the Jews in the wilderness, and many of them died. And of course God told Moses, lift a fiery serpent and put it up on the brazen pole, and it shall come to pass that if any Jew looks upon it, he will be healed. And in, there is no explanation in the Old Testament of this at all. The first explanation is given in John. 
And the context is John 3, 16. What's, what must I do to have eternal life? In the same way that Moses lifted up the serpent on the brazen pole, the Son of Man must also be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, we know that's true, but that's salvation. But Jesus said what? If you love me, you will believe in me? No. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Oh, well, that's Jesus' commandments. Uh, yeah, Jesus had some things that he said, but he didn't come to do his own will. And everything, what did he say? Everything I say has already been said. Everything I teach is right from the Father. You've already heard it. He's just explaining it. He's bringing it into light. His commandments aren't different from the Father's. Everything that he said was already said in the Old Testament. And so guess what? The commands of Jesus are in the Torah. After all, many Christians, we love the Ten Commandments, but we don't want to do the other things. We want to pick and choose. This is an important book. Now, I was going to get into chapter 2 this time, but that's not going to happen. We're going to do that next time. But I want to encourage you to get a copy of the Didache and to read it. And maybe you're afraid to do so because you're afraid that it's, uh, you know, works oriented. Don't forget, Paul said we must work out our salvation daily with fear and trembling before our God. And we also have to understand there's a difference between obedience and salvation. When we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior on faith, through grace, fruit must show. It's not fruit of effort, but it's fruit that God creates in us. But if we aren't working it out and we aren't submitting, we're not going to see that fruit. The Didache is a way for us to see that fruit. So we'll get into chapter 2 next week. Thank you for joining me here on Beyond the Basics. Be blessed and be a blessing.